Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today I'm bringing you a second video this Sunday because we have some really big news that we need to talk about. So Nvidia is going to buy ARM. If you guys didn't see my previous video, I brought this out a few weeks ago about what if Nvidia would buy ARM, like what would that look like? You guys should definitely check that out. I might go in more depth in a few areas in that particular video. But now here today, it's officially happening. Now, there are a few caveats. It's not like something that's going to happen overnight. This is a huge deal in the industry, and there's got to be a lot of I's dotted and T's crossed. But the SoftBank and NVIDIA, they have reached an agreement. So the biggest hurdle has been uh, you know, overcome at this point in time. So, all righty, guys, we're just going to jump straight into this over here on Bloomberg and go into the details, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about this situation. NVIDIA buys SoftBank's arm for 40 billion in biggest chip deal. So this is a huge chunk of money, but obviously it's gonna be worth it. And as we talk later, this is a, this is a huge investment for NVIDIA moving forward. They actually go into a lot of it here in the article. But all right, so NVIDIA Corp said it agreed to buy SoftBank Group's Chip division ARM for $40 billion, taking control of some of the most widely used technology in electronics in the semiconductor industry. Okay, so this is obviously a big deal there. You have NVIDIA will pay $21.5 billion. I'm not going to go into like the exact numbers there. If you're big into the finances, you could check out the article for yourself. All right, so this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Initial payment to SoftBank is a small premium over the $31.4 billion the Japanese company paid to acquire ARM in 2016. So they're making themselves some money. SoftBank is expected to own less than 10% of NVIDIA because a lot of their payouts are going to be in stock options. So that's part of this up here. But they're not going to have a majority stake in there. But as well, as long as NVIDIA does well, these investors are also going to make some money. All right, so regulatory approval may take as long as 18 months. This is a big one here. So this isn't going to be like an overnight deal and NVIDIA is going to start running the show. It's going to be a long, drawn-out process here, but it starts today. So it's like 18 months from today before the transaction is completed and the deal needs sign-off from the UK, China, the European Union, and the United States. So this is the second hurdle, obviously coming up with an agreement. That's step one. Step two is making sure the governments are okay. So there's going to be a lot of squeaky wheels needing some grease there, but NVIDIA's got the capital now to make that happen. So I think, once again, like they're, they're saying, this is basically just going to be a matter of time. It's not an if, it's a when. In a move to placate ARM's powerful customers and defuse regulatory concerns, NVIDIA said the UK company will continue to operate the open license model while maintaining the global customer neutrality that has been foundational to its success. Okay, so this was really the big one. This was the big question that everybody had, and more than likely the UK, China, EU, or the US is going to make this a stipulation for NVIDIA's permission to buy ARM. Nobody wants to see more monopolies out in the world, not at this point in time. So forcing NVIDIA to continue the open license model, meaning anybody who wants to license ARM technology can do so. They do have to pay NVIDIA fee. I mean, you know, so NVIDIA does make money off of this. So it, it is good for them in that sense. So obviously they wouldn't want to shake that up. But this was the big concern that I had. If NVIDIA really wanted to make it a closed system, they could really screw a lot of things up. But obviously, you know, this is what made ARM successful. So they're not going to do that. Or at least they say they're not, at least not at this point in time. And then NVIDIA said it will add its technology to the offering licensed by ARM. So basically, NVIDIA is going to enhance the ARM offering with NVIDIA-based technology. So ARM... APUs will start using NVIDIA graphics at the very least. I don't think anybody should be surprised by that one. Okay, so NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Wang, said that he loves ARM's business model and wants to expand its broad client list. As for concerns, the deal will upset ARM's relationship with customers, including Apple. Huang said NVIDIA is spending a lot of money for the acquisition and has no incentive to do anything that would cause clients to walk away. Absolutely not. Any smart business person, whether you like Jensen or not, the man is a very, very smart businessman. So he knows that 
keeping everybody happy, at least for the foreseeable future, is obviously in his best interest. This way he can keep his revenues coming in with ARM. So, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any big shakeups, at least not until much further down the road. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. Okay, so under Huang, NVIDIA has risen up rapidly in the ranks of technology companies in market value and influence. We already know that NVIDIA stock has gone bananas. I remember last year looking at it at like $158 a share, and they're showing it right now at 503 So yeah, that's pretty nuts in basically a 12 to 14 month time period. Already a dominant force in graphics chips for video games, Whatever, uh, NVIDIA has carved out a slice of the market in the data center and moving into self-driving vehicles. This, I think, is going to be one of the big driving factors for buying ARM. This way, NVIDIA can have their technology in there, their AI technology, which they do kind of talk about here in a sec. ARM's importance far outweighs its revenue, and this is the reason why this is a big deal which comes in the forms of license, licensing chip fundamentals and selling processor designs. Its technology is at the heart of more than 1 billion smartphones sold annually. So this right here is basically getting your technology and about 14% of the world's population, the entire population, each and every single year. That Talk about market share. Chips that use its code and layouts are are in everything from factory equipment to home electronics. Yes, ARM CPUs are in just about everything that is cheap. Honestly, that, that's the case right now. Uh, the ac acquisition is fueled by the drive to bring artificial intelligence to everything that has an on-off switch or an on switch. Uh, having succeeded in selling NVIDIA's graphics chips to owners in, of data centers to speed up image recognition and language processing, Wong is looking to make sure that his technology helps spread that to everything from self-driving vehicles to smart meters. So this is the big thing. This is the obvious upfront thing. And tomorrow you're going to see NVIDIA stock shoot through the roof. And this is the reason why. It's because NVIDIA is basically taking the lead on AI. They are grabbing the bull by the horns and they're trying to wrestle it to the ground. Now, there are other competitors out there. We know that like uh, Amazon's trying to build their own AI stuff and Google is. But NVIDIA for the consumer market is definitely in the lead or in the pole position into getting this technology out there. And they obviously want to do it from big things to small things. And buying ARM is a huge way to make that happen with ARM-based APUs. All right. So it's a company with reach that's just unlike any other company in the history of technology. Uh, we're uniting NVIDIA's leading AI computing with ARM's vast ecosystem. Scrolling on down here a bit. One customer that will be directly challenged is Intel. See, this is the other side. This is the more long-term goal, I believe. Wang said a priority will be investing in ARM's efforts to design chips for data center computing while he's carved out a $3 billion niche in business for supplying uh, Alphabet Group, so Google and Facebook, uh, with graphics processors that help them with AI workloads, which we talked about a second ago. Wang said... He wants to speed up the adoption of ARM-based central processors or CPUs. That's a lucrative market dominated by Intel, which has about 90% share. Now, we know AMD is making huge inroads into Intel's share, and over the next 10 years, Intel's market share is going to be much, much lower. However, this right here is what I talked about in the last video. If NVIDIA bought ARM, they're going to go after the CPU business. And here they are directly telling you that that is a long term goal that NVIDIA has is to take over the x86 CPU market. And uh, yeah, so that's from them. It's not just me saying that's what they want to do. That's them saying they want to do that. All right. So this is huge. We got a lot of information here. First off, NVIDIA basically confirming everything I talked about in the previous video. Not a lot of you guys saw that video. It didn't really do that well. Well, now you should go back and watch it because everything I said in there is now coming true. All right, so NVIDIA is going to want to take over most of the central processing market, the AI market, and they already dominate the graphics market. They want to control the one ring. They want to be the big guys there. So yeah, this is a scary proposition because we know NVIDIA as a company, when they have no competition, they do whatever they want. 
this isn't that. This is definitely going to be an uphill battle for them to get into the CPU market, but they definitely declared that is where they want to go with this. So getting x86 out of data centers, that's going to take like 20, maybe even 30 years. It's a very long-term strategy. But getting into your computer as a PC gamer or whatever, you guys might have options. Me, you, us, we might have options here in the next, I don't know, five, 10 years at most. NVIDIA has a lot of very intelligent engineers working for them. And if anybody could fast track this, it's going to be these guys because they have so much more money now. Like I said, last year, their stock was down to like 158. I was actually trading it. You know, I was selling it short. I was making money off of it going down last year. Now it's up about $500. And this is the reason why this this acquisition. So they're going to have all the resources in the world to be able to do this. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a very interesting change coming over the next five to 10 years. The next generation consoles, PS6 and uh, Xbox series, whatever they want to call it. I don't, I don't know. Microsoft's naming schemes are weird. It's very likely NVIDIA is going to be offering them some sort of APU ARM-based solution for those consoles. And, you know, Sony doesn't seem to really care that much about backwards compatibility. Microsoft does. So Sony, I could see easily jumping ship. We already know that Nintendo's on board. They're using ARM and NVIDIA already, and that seems to be doing very well for them. Uh, Microsoft might stick with AMD, but who knows? But that's just one area where they're going to be competing. NVIDIA could also come up with a much bigger CPU core and GPU core, so make a big APU and start making their own consoles like the NVIDIA Shield TVs that we have here today, but they could beef them up even more. All they really need to do is just create their own operating system or a derivative of Linux. And uh, yeah, they could actually start building their own ecosystem right now. And with their deep pockets and deep connections with gaming companies, they could go ahead and start bringing games over to their platforms, uh, having them ported over. And then eventually, if they get into next generation consoles, the games will then be designed with NVIDIA CPUs in mind. So this is going to be really crazy. This is a huge shakeup. And I kind of agree with the article that Intel is the one who should be most afraid here. AMD is kicking the crap out of them. And then NVIDIA is going to start kicking the crap out of them too. So considering their seven nanometer process has been delayed till 2022, 2023, things are looking really, really, really bad for Intel right now. And I talked about that on the live stream. I don't think they'll ever really be able to recover here. But obviously the main goal of this for NVIDIA long term is to basically put AI into everything. But for us as PC gamers, they are going after that market as well. So uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see how this works out. I know a lot of you guys are really afraid of them becoming a monopoly, but the fact that they will likely be forced to license their technology out forever, there's probably never going to be a, ex you know, uh, an expiration date for that. They'll likely have to do that. So like Intel could then start making ARM based, you know, CPUs or something in the future. Same thing with AMD, like these other companies could start doing it. Uh, so they'll never have a complete monopoly, but for every CPU sold, they might be getting money like a licensing fee. So we are kind of looking at a potential godfather scenario 10, 20 years from now with Nvidia just going, you know, just give me my, my piece, give me my cut, you know, my protection money and uh, you can stay in business. That could be a challenge for down the road. And obviously the regulatory committees are going to be looking into that. But at the same time, I can see them coming out with some very compelling products for the masses, for all of us. Imagine smartphones with NVIDIA graphics in there now. They're going to be infinitely better. So basically every smartphone could be a Nintendo Switch. You know, they'll have the, the hardware capabilities of it. So... That might hurt Nintendo. This might actually be really, really bad for Nintendo if that starts happening. But uh, yeah, just think of all that cool AI stuff that they started showing off with the RTX 30 series. Imagine being able to do that stuff on your smartphone a couple of years from now. So there's a lot of potential upsides here. There are a lot of potential downsides. But overall, this is happening. Whether you like it or not, this is going to happen. So we all really have to accept that. And like I said, hope for the best, expect the worst. But at the very least, you can't say it won't be interesting. And even if Intel does not have, cannot compete with AMD, which with Zen 3 coming out here, 
I, to me, this is the beginning of the end for Intel. Now AMD really does have to look at NVIDIA as their true competition on both CPU and GPU. So this is even more motivation for AMD to take over more of the GPU market because that will then therefore hurt NVIDIA on their future CPU side. Any money they can take away from NVIDIA is going to help them. So they have to be as competitive as possible at every possible level here. So yeah, we're going to have some very, very exciting, very competitive, hard-fought years here. And maybe Intel will surprise us all. And they'll, they'll see the writing on the wall here that they're basically out of business in 10 years if they don't get their act together. So hopefully they say, well, it's time to stop screwing around. And maybe we'll have three competitors, three companies making CPUs, three companies making GPUs. To me, I'm really interested to see where this goes. I think NVIDIA could do well getting their technology into ARM. Think of like a Raspberry Pi with an NVIDIA GPU attached to it. Those things will be infinitely more powerful. And the cool stuff you can already do with a Raspberry Pi is great. But, you know, with that graphical enhancement there, it'll be even more effective for a lot of people. So to me, I see the upsides. But I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Good, bad, different. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. But alrighty, guys, that's about all I have for you here today. Hope you enjoy the uh, emergency news video here. I thought that this was kind of a big deal, so I wanted to get it to you as quickly as possible. If you like this kind of content, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. Really does help me out. Share this one around. A lot of people don't really realize how big of a deal this is. But it is. This is going to change everything. But alrighty, guys, that's all I have for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.